Welcome to the third part of vector spaces. In order to follow the contents of this video easily, I would suggest to first go through the first two videos in this playlist. And in this video, I'm going to talk about another very essential concept of vector spaces, the inner product. In particular, understanding this concept is important for physicists from quantum mechanics point of view. However, before coming to this point, I would like to first talk about different special representation of the elements of vector space. That is soon I will deviate from the notation mathematician prefer over to the one physicist favor. In the previous two videos on vector spaces, you may have noted that I was using the lost English alphabet for the elements of a vector space such as u, v, w, x. That is, I consider u, v, w, x belongs to the vector space v. And similarly for the elements of the field F, I kept on using the initial alphabet such as A, B, C, D belongs to the field F. This is the way usually mathematicians follow for differentiating between the elements of a vector space and the elements of field F. On the other hand, physicists have their own fascinating way of representing the elements of a vector space. For a vector space, over the field of numbers, physicists put an arrowhead or a line over a letter in the form A with an arrowhead or A with a line. This notation in particularly is used for the element of vector space, what I have been calling as the space of lines in arrowheads. And for a vector space, over the field of complex numbers, there is another very fascinating notation first introduced by Paul Dirac for the elements of Halbert's space. The elements of vector space or the field F of complex numbers are usually represented by enclosing a Roman alphabet with an avoid and an angled bracket in the form of this. Instead of calling it an element of vector space or simply a vector, physicists call it a kit. So for physicists, a kit is an element of vector space over the field of complex numbers. And for physicists, such a space is the well-known Halbert space. Now with this sketch of the representation for the elements of vector space, let's move to the title of the video that is to inner product on the basis of inner product vector spaces are grouped into two categories in one category the inner product can be defined whereas in the second category the inner product cannot be defined the one on which inner product can be defined is in fact the spaces for physicists and i will limit myself to this group of vector spaces only. I begin from the notation mathematician use and will eventually put it into the one physicists prefer. For a vector space V over the field of real numbers, the inner product is in fact a function that takes a pair of elements of space V to number belonging to the field F. That is, for two elements U and V belong to V, the inner product is written as angle bracket u, u comma v angle brackets and this possess the following properties. The inner product of u and v is always either greater or equal to zero. This property is called semi-definiteness or positivity. The inner product equals zero only if either one of the two matrices is a null vector or zero vector or both of them are zero vectors. The inner product obey the commutative property that is changing the order of the elements of the vector space doesn't affect the result so they commute with each other. 
To catch the idea behind this concept more deeply, let me explain it through an example. Let the elements U and V be n rows column matrices in the form of this and this. Then the inner product on these two elements is defined as the sum of the products of the corresponding elements. And since U, V, I are the elements over the space of real numbers, therefore their, the sum of their products is always greater or equal to zero, which specifies the first property of inner product. If we carefully observe the right side of this equation, it is similar to what we call the dot product in the vector space of lines and arrowheads. For example, consider a three-dimensional vector A in the form of x, i, a, y, j plus a, z, k and similarly the second vector B. The dot product of these vector is obtained as the sum of the product of the corresponding elements, which is similar to that equation. So the inner product of a space or the field of real number is in fact a generalization of the dot product of the space of lines and arrowheads. Now if the field F belongs to a set of complex number, then in order to validate the commutative property of inner product, a little change in the definition is made in the form of this. Where the bar or the elements of V in fact represent the complex conjugate. So the commutative property for an inner product of the elements of a vector space or the field of complex number is written in this form. Now again, physicists do not follow this notation of mathematician. Rather, they have their own fancy notation for the complex conjugate. This notation is in fact an inverted kit and is called a bra in the form of this where the kit is inverted. In this notation of physicists, the inner product uv is in fact written as bra times kit. In the next video of this playlist, I'll be using the inner product to explain orthogonality, normalization and how to extract information from a kit related to a physical system.